Yo, what is up everybody? Jumping here and today I am back on some Dork Souls with my Battle Mage. Now in this episode I decided I was going to kill Sif, but then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Let me get some PvPs in the forest just to, you know, take up some time and guess what? I mean, this is a PvP build so I should be showing this stuff. Alright, so this is going to be my first opponent. I'm going to edit this because it takes forever for people to invade. But yeah, this is probably the best fight I had, to be quite honest. This guy was pretty good. And he was using a great axe. Look at that. Whew, that was a really good dodge. Now, I'm not really used to fighting against great axes. That, and guess what? It's been a while since I've actually played on this build. So I'm still kind of warming up to it. Okay, so this is really dumb of me. I don't know why I went for that. That's just me being like Artard because he easily got that running attack and just knocked me the hell over and look at that he got another running attack on me all right at this point i'm not panicking because i try to always like be real cool when i'm fighting because i always know that if i can figure out my opponent maybe i can you know use it against them and i've already kind of figured this guy out it seems like he likes to do a lot of running attacks with that great axe and a lot of roll attacks now unfortunately i'm the same way with this moonlight great sword you know, I do a lot of running attacks and a lot of roll attacks, and of course I occasionally will do the R2, but what's nice about it is that at least it will keep people back. Alright, so right now, this is kind of dirty. Now, in a duel, you're not supposed to do that, but we never bow to one another. It's the forest. He probably thought, you know, maybe I had a ganker just waiting in the shadows to come up and backstab him or something, so he just kind of came after me. Right here, I back off, though, because, I mean, that is kind of one of the rules, is that when you're fighting someone, if they're going to use a green blossom, you let them use it. You know, especially if they let you use it. You don't run in for the free attack. But in the end, I was able to get that final poke in and take them out. Alrighty. So now this is going to be our second fight. I'm pretty sure this guy's a little low level. You know, that's the problem sometimes when you're PvPing in the forest. It seems like lower level people can come in. And yeah, this guy doesn't really seem like he's used to PvP. I got that really nice dead angle on him. And the reason why I say that I don't think he's really used to PvP is because he's trying to turtle. I mean, that's really not a very good strategy. He's already been hit with a dead angle. So at this point, he has so low HP that he was already pretty much almost dead. So for him to just try to back up and turtle... I mean, what, what good is that going to do him? Like, I'm just going to pierce his shield. Now, this guy, I felt a little bad about this because I guess I kind of did something a little bit dirty. So he gives me the bow, and I think I already gave him the bow, so it's all good. Now, he starts spinning around in circles. Now, I was doing it just, I don't know, for shits and giggles, but I really, if I could go back, I would have not have actually attacked him when he was doing that because I guess he was just mimicking me, but... It's whatever. I ended up knocking him down with the R2 of the Moonlight Greatsword and finishing, finishing him off with Wrath of the Gods. Alright, so now we have a Red Invader. I'm pretty sure that guy who I just killed was a little bit pissed about the fact that I ran in and I hit him when he was goofing around. Because, you'll see, he'll try to get some revenge. Now this Red Invader is using the Black Knight Halberg, which I think the other guy was using the same weapon. And yeah, I mean... It's a pretty decent weapon. I know that a lot of people like it a lot. Personally, I would probably use the Scythe if I was going to use a weapon like that. Because it has all pretty much all the same attacks, but it doesn't have the horrible R2s. And here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. He wants that revenge. <laughs> Trying to basically uh, gank me. And I guess the Red's just going along with it. Now, I got really lucky I didn't die from that attack. And yeah, I'm going to heal because... <laughs> I'm scared. I'm very scared, but I get I went ahead and got another really nice dead angle there. It's like, come on, come at me, bro. I'm just gonna R2 both of you. I thought if I could pull that off and get both of them in one explosion, that would be epic. And right there I got I think another dead angle and another dead angle. So that was like three dead angles, like in rapid succession. And I gave them a little wave. I wasn't gonna taunt them. I I kinda seen where the guy was coming from because I guess I was a little dirty now this guy I've actually played against this guy quite a bit I mean I don't like to show the gamer tags and this guy's not too bad but 
there's been times where when I fought him in the past, you know, he just kind of falls into the, I'm going to use Sunlight Blade or Dark Moon Blade and use a really overpowered weapon and basically just try to, like, one-shot you. I mean, that's cool. It's whatever. Like, Moonlight, I want to say Moonlight, but Dark Moon Blade and Sunlight Blade is, uh, you know, they're, they're amazing. But I used to do that all the time, and I just... It's not fun for me anymore. I like to try to mix it up and not rely on a buff as much. And if I do buff, it's pretty much just with like charcoal or gold pine resin, things like that. I don't mess around with a lot of builds anymore that rely on dark moon blade and sunlight blade, crystal magic weapon, that kind of stuff. Alrighty, so now this guy, I think this guy's, he might be a little low level. I don't know what he's doing. He's mid rolling. And right away I can tell he's mid rolling. And once I see that, I know that it should be pretty easy to go ahead and hit him, either with one of these R2s, or if he actually mid-rolls, I can actually run in and get a quick hit in, and I think I'm about to do it like right now. The secret to anyone who's mid-rolling is that if you can get them to mid-roll, and then you wait for the roll and then attack, yeah, they're done for. I guess he was low level. He had very, very low HP. Alright, well, I think this is the final match that I actually had in the forest, and it's it's against the red, and yeah, I was really confused by this guy, because I gotta look at his weapons, it looks like a bandit knife and a parrying dagger, so I thought, hey, he's gonna be a backstab fisher, or he's going to be a parry spammer, but I guess I was wrong, I mean, I'll let this speak for itself, what is he doing? I mean, for real? Like, he's spamming that weapon at me? Like, I just, I didn't understand that. Alright, well that's pretty much it for the PvP guys. Yeah. Alright, so I did that on purpose so I would actually die. Because if you're going to come into the forest and you're actually trying to fight the boss, then yeah, you should be undead. Otherwise, you're going to have a shit ton of people trying to invade you and being annoying. Same thing if you're trying to join the Forest Covenant, you need to be undead. Otherwise, you'll never be able to join because there's always someone trying to join you. Kind of failed right there, trying to recover. Alright, but now let's go ahead and run through the forest. Now, because I've already been here, I've opened it, I've PvP'd here before, most of this is already done. But I will still show you a couple things in the forest that is, I guess, worth mentioning. Alright, the first thing is, is that these guys are actually pretty good for farming. Like, if you are not interested in trying to get souls from PvP, then the best thing to really do, I personally think, is to just farm these guys over and over and over again. On new game, you can get, I think, 7,000 souls. And if you can kill these dudes quick, I mean, it's pretty worth it. I mean, 7,000 in probably like 20 seconds. And on new game plus, I'm pretty sure it's 3,000 a piece and then 2,000, so I think it's like 11. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck the Forest Covenant. <laughs> What a fool we have! What a wretched fool we have! Yeah, 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 shut up. That's right, what you gonna do about it? I don't know. I'm not really against the Forest Covenant. I don't like it all that much. I hate being a part of it because it's the forest is nothing but gankers, primarily. I would say most of the time, there's a good chance you're gonna get gankers. You can get the stone armor right there. Stone armor... I don't really think it's worth it. I mean, you have Havels for like the heaviest set. You have Giants, which can be upgraded and will give you the best defense. So if you're going to wear a heavy armor, just go along one of those two. All right, so these mushrooms over here, yeah. These guys are dicks. Like, they hit really hard. So if you can actually use some range to take them out, that's not bad. If not, you can just pretty much just poke at them until they finally die. Uh, I think after, like, so much damage, they will, like, stagger. But, yeah, the stagger is only for about one second, so keep that in mind. If they hit you, they will hit really hard. Yeah, there's a lot of gankers in the forest. Now, I don't really know why people gank. I guess maybe they aren't that good, and they feel like the only way that they can play PvP and win is by ganking. That's a possibility. But I also think that, you know, what it could be is that the best way to really get souls... If you're trying to level up, is PvP. That is so true. So I think a lot of people gank just so that they can level up. They want the souls. And I don't know. I think that that's just wrong. Because honestly, there's a lot better ways of getting souls than ganking. I'll give you a great example. 
host a fight club. If you go if you go to the undead bird and you try to host a fight club, now sometimes, you know, someone some jerk off might kill you, although you're trying to do a fight club. But if you host a fight club, most of the time people will go along with that and you'll get way more souls doing that. And you don't even have to do anything. So if you're not very good at PvP and you just want to level up, I think that's the best option. Ganking, you know, all you're going to get is hate mail. And I don't even know how people who gank feel good about themselves after doing it. I really don't. Alright, so this is where Sif is. And yeah, it's pretty epic. Freaking Artorius Graveyard. I love all the swords. And of course, you have his sword, which is freaking ginormous like that's i don't understand that because when you get the sword it's not nearly that big and artorius himself wasn't that big i don't know this is definitely one of my favorite boss battles in the game just because i think sif is such a cool boss but i really feel sorry for him i mean here's the thing that you have to understand although yes sif attacks you and he's trying to kill you the reality is, is that he's really just trying to protect you, or at least that's what people speculate. And the reason why they say that is because he knows what happened to Artorius. And of course you also have the alternate cutscene if you have the DLC, if you haven't seen it go look it up. But yeah, I mean no matter what he will attack you and one of you, have to one of you has to die. And it sucks, but the truth of the matter is I think that he doesn't want you to be taken by the Abyss just like his master Artorius was. Now this is a pretty epic boss battle. To be quite honest, Sif is really easy boss if you can learn the timing of his attacks. When he swings, if you roll, you will take no damage. Now at this point, I always feel so sorry for him when you get him this low. Look at him. Oh, poor, poor puppy. It sucks, man. I wish they would have put something in the game to give you an option not to kill him. I think that a lot of people would be happy with that. I'm surprised they didn't do it for the Artorias DLC. They should have just made it so if you do the DLC, he gives you the ring. You don't have to fight him. But I hit him with the headshot and I gave him a proper bow and I'm going to pray for his soul. Poor little boy. Alright, well that's pretty much that fight. As you can see, it was actually really easy because I rolled through almost every single one of his attacks. I think he hit me once. Over here, you can get the Hornet Ring. I hate that ring. I cannot stand the Hornet Ring. I really wish in Dark Souls 2 they do not add a ring like that. Alright guys, I guess I'll take this time real quick. To just kind of go over my build and show you what I'm using exactly. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll show the equipment first. I'm using the Moonlight Greatsword. Amazing for the scaling with intelligence. I'm not the biggest fan of the moveset though, I have to be honest. I mean, the R2 is definitely a lot of fun, and it can really mess people up if you hit them with it. But outside of that, I mean, the rolling attack's not too bad for like a counter attack. The running attack is probably my favorite attack it has because it's so good at dead angling. And that's pretty much all you have besides just the normal vertical swings when you're two-handing and the horizontal swings when you're one-handing. So that's one of my only complaints about the sword, but outside of that, like I said, it is really good. I'm using the Moonlight Butterfly Horn as my secondary weapon. I like this a lot. You know, when you watch in some of my games, I use it generally only when someone gets low in HP. If they get down to like, I don't know, 50 health, 100 health, I'll bust it out because if I can hit them at range, I can finish them off and hopefully, you know, I won't die. For my talisman, I'm using Velka's talisman. It's great. It scales with an A in intelligence, and I use it to cast Wrath of the Gods. That's pretty much it. For the shield, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's just the lightest shield in the game, so it's like 0.5. This is the shield I like. I don't really ever use it to block. Sometimes I'll use it to parry, but that's about it. For the armor, Crown of Dust, just to increase my power of Wrath of the Gods. Only downside is that yes, it makes you weak to magic, but because a lot of times I use Great Magic Barrier, if I have a feeling someone's going to be casting magic, I'll just cast Great Magic Barrier, and that should protect me. For my armor, I'm using the Wanderer's Coat. I just think this is the coolest looking armor in the game, but that's my opinion. For the gloves, Elite Knight Gauntlets, they're not bad. They give you a little bit of poise. I mean, I wish I could use better gloves, but yo, there's so much weight on this build right now that it's 
it's just not possible. For the legs, I'm using the iron leggings. I like this set a lot. That's the Solaire set, you know, bro layer. And I think the iron leggings look cool. They have good stats and they give you poise. For the ring, I'm using the wolf ring just to make up a little bit more poise for myself so I can take a hit and not get stun locked. And if I do get stun locked, because generally I can only take one hit and then the second hit's going to stun lock me, I can just toggle escape. For my ring, I'm using the Ring of Favor and Protection. You know, this is just a godly ring. HP, Endurance, Equipment Load, there you go. For my actual stats, I have 50 in Vitality. They will give me 1800 health with the Ring of Favor and Protection. The Attunement is 12. Now, if I could go back, maybe I would have 14, because I don't know what I'm going to do. I might use two Wrath of the Gods so I can have six castings, but I'm really digging Great Magic Barrier, I have to be honest. It is really useful, especially when I go against people using the Moonlight Greatsword. If I see that they're using that sword, I know that they're probably going to have Dark Magic, or they're going to have Sorceries, and if I can cast Great Magic Barrier, if they don't switch their weapon, I mean, they're going to do no damage to me at all, so it's a really good counter. The Endurance is 40. After 40, it's just all equip load. It stops, your stamina stops going up, so... 40 is a good number, but a lot of times, I mean, you can get this up to like 50 or even 60. And the only reason why you would ever do that is so that you can actually equip like really good armors, heavier armors, and have a lot of poise and still fast roll. But 40 endurance is really all you need for a build like this. The strength is 16. The dexterity is 10. That is the minimum requirements for the Moonlight Greatsword. That's the only reason why I actually have them at 16 and 10. Resistance is default. Never level up resistance in Dark Souls. In Dark Souls 2 now, resistance is going to be really important, or potentially important. And I really, I'm digging that about Dark Souls 2. I like that they actually made resistance important. The intelligence is 40 for the scaling, and the faith is 28. And the faith is only 28, so I can cast Wrath of the Gods. Alright, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the build. My favorite thing about the build is just the surprise element. When I pull out that Moonlight Butterfly Horn, oh man, that can really catch people off guard that I'm packing a spear. So they start freaking out, trying to dodge, because they know that they're already really close to dying. So if I can get one hit in, they're, they're done. The Wrath of the God is another great combo with the Moonlight Greatsword, because if you can knock them down with the R2 and then you actually cast Wrath of the Gods as they're getting up, a lot of times that will be enough to almost pretty much kill them. I mean, that's crazy, but it is a really good combo. All right, guys, well, I guess that's pretty much it. I really hope you have enjoyed this episode. It's been fun, you know, doing a little bit of PvP, showing the build, and, of course, fighting Sif. Love that boss. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could like this video for me. It, it always helps me out, and I always appreciate it. And yeah, that's pretty much it, like I said, so I hope you guys have a nice day, and peace out.